here is a picture of the most powerful black man in the world. Here is the picture of the richest black man in the world. Now, if you're not with one or the other, you have lowered your standards. Because the definition of lowering your standards basically means if it's not the best, it's lower. So when you say lower your standards, you are already falling into word trickery. Stop saying lower your standards. You have to say have standards. Black females to males, I believe it's a two to one ratio. Two to one ratio. And out of the black males, about 40% of us are in jail. You got me? 40%. So with the remaining percent, that's 60. Some of us are gay. Some of us are already married. And then that just leaves that last part. That small, maybe 5% out of that 40 are the top. They have the, the MBAs, they, they have the, the masters, bachelors, the PhDs, and they are the athletes. They are the ones that make millions of dollars a year, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And if you don't get with those guys, you're just left with the guys who make about 75000 to about $50,000 a year, which would be the normal range. So now if you're only looking for the top, you have a very small pool to look from. Steve Harvey addressed this in a few of his videos. Um, there's one that's going around right now, why are black females, 42% uh, of them not married. He addresses that. All, all of the females are looking in that same exact pool. So you're saying that you can't find a man. You know, I find that to be BS for the most part because there are plenty of good men out there. You're just looking in the wrong places. I feel that a lot of women like to jump into a small pool and try to say that I'm prime picky. Now, the reality of this is this. If I have hundreds of thousands of dollars and I'm a millionaire, why do I want you when I can get any female? Any female. What makes you so valuable? And this is the false ideology that women get engraved that you're a princess, uh, you're one in a million, which indirectly, if you had to break it down, you're a female, you have breasts, you have a vagina, and you can give birth to a child. Besides that, what makes you different from any other female? Waiting, waiting, exactly. So a rich man can sit back and dog you out until you're old and gray and dried up and then go marry your little sister. Why would you want to sit back and deal with that personality? There's nothing humbling about a rich person. Now, yes, there are a few here and there. I'm not saying that they all fit into that category, but you will find a lot of common traits within those people. Example, example if you have a father that was abusive, there's certain traits that you're going to see in the children. You might see a son that acts just like his father, and then you might see a son that is so against violence that he won't even defend himself. You got me? Those are the two extremes that come from that type of behavior. You might see a father that was straight about business, does not spend time with the family. In return, he might have children that might be straight business or have children that will spend time with his family. You got me. So there's certain traits that are going to go hand in hand with what you're looking for. So let's not be delusional when we say there are no good black men out there. The question is, what are you looking for 
What is the categories? Now, if you're saying you want a strong black man, okay, that's beautiful. If you want to say you want a man who has no STDs, that's also beautiful. No children, that's also beautiful. Do they exist? Yes, they do. If you're 30 years old, how about talk to a guy who's a little bit younger than you? How about you sit back and see what his relationship is with his mother? See if he has any siblings. See if he's the oldest sibling, if he's the only child. See what social um, mechanisms have been inside of his upbringing to that point. If he's the oldest brother and the father walked away, okay, so now you know he's a provider. If he is the youngest child and he's spoiled, you know it's all about himself. You got me. But I feel a lot of women from the age of 16 to 25, before they hit their 30s, they love to date these bad boys and they go on this mission of trying to change them. There is no such thing as an R&B thug. You are one or the other. You females like to get on this goddess complex. You like to get on it, but you fail because you call yourself a queen. And you wanna take it back to ancient Egypt. That's a beautiful thing, but they didn't call themselves kings and queens. They called themselves gods and goddesses. So if you're going to get on the goddess complex, you have to understand what is the making of the goddess. If you're going to be with a man, you bring him to his godhood. When he enters inside you, you give him the opportunity to reproduce and create another life, which makes him a god. And then in return, you are a goddess. And after he has been with you, he's going to have all that adrenaline and hormones and everything pumping. You make him feel better. You build his ego up. So what am I saying? Can a man be a god without a female? No. That's just two guys in the dark having fun. No one can get pregnant. Can two females become goddesses? Those are two girls exploring their body doesn't happen. You need the key, you need the lock. You need one to elevate the other. So if you are talking to men, don't always get with a man who's already made because if he's already made, why does he need you? Understand that. A man who's already made, who already has everything, why does he need you? Why not be with a man and you build with him? You ladies have the perfect opportunity in your life to be with a man, help raise him up to his godhood. You got me? You have that ability to give birth to him's children and give him something beautiful. And a man will value you. But if you have no value upon yourself, why would anyone cherish you? Steve Harvey had one thing that I kind of do agree with him. You should have a 90 day rule. And the only reason why I say this is this. A lot of you females, a lot of you, not all, but a lot, you fall for guys who have slick game. If a brother has slick game, you need to run away. If he can sit back and put those words together, to sit back to conjure ideas inside your own head that allows you to be open, then you know what? You will fall. Anyone who sits back and practices slick game, fast game, or game in general, you should run away. That means he does it all the time. And the same as that concept, if I sit back and I run all the time, I will have a runner's body. If I swim, I will have a swimmer's body. If I read books a lot, I should be intellectual. It only makes sense. Anything that you put time into, you're going to bear the result of. So brothers who are slick game, run away. If a brother's a little shy and timid, that's the guy you want to talk to. Stop falling for this idea of swagger. Swagger is the dumbest thing that has ever been invented. Secretly, we are gay. Look it up. Females, you have to understand one simple thing. You can't think of your emotions. You have to be a rational thinker. If you think of your emotions, someone will play you off of your emotions. Now, back to looking with men. The question is, where are you looking? The question is, when you have a man around you, do your girlfriends run your relationship? Because a lot of females have girlfriends and they don't want to see them happy. You need to understand that the best enemy is not the enemy you don't know. It's the enemy inside your camp who always smiles. People get so jealous of you and you can share all of your belongings. 
You can be light skinned and your dark skinned girlfriends will envy you. You can be dark skinned and your light skinned girlfriends will envy you. You can be thick, your skinny girlfriends will envy you. You can be skinny and your fat girlfriends will envy you. You have to understand the cycle of jealousy and envy. You have to understand when they will feed you false lies about what is going on inside your world. And most important of all, the man does not catch the female. The female catches the man. You have to put yourself in a predicament where the guy can catch you. You need to go where guys are. And don't fall into stereotypes that guys don't have emotions. Guys like to play sports all day. That's only a small percentage of us. Not all of us are there. I mean, go to Barnes and Nobles. Go to church. Try different churches. Try different areas of congregation. Get out there. See the world. And you will find yourself a decent black man. It's not that hard. We normally roll together. This generation of black men, we play video games. The last generation didn't play as many video games. But we're the Nintendo era. You also need to see one simple thing. And this one simple thing is this. What is the common dynam denominator in every single one of the guys that you talk to? And if you see that you have a type, guess what? You've already limited yourself. Do not have types. You should be able to go on a date with a different person every single week. I did not say sleep with a date. That means you go out, you have some um, food, you see a movie, you might go bowling. Get to know who that person is. And once you start to see that, hey, I only go for guys who have X, then you know what? You need to change X. If you say, well, he's not my type, well, then the question is, how do you know you don't like Japanese food if you never tried it? How do you know? You need to try different things. Don't limit yourself. My mom was 80 four years old I feel that she can say in her lifespan before she died she had a Pacific type because she has lived long enough to know what men range from if you're not damn near so many years away from being 20 I mean excuse me a hundred how can you have a type if you're 30 years old and you just do basic mathematics what did you do the first five years of your life the first five years of your life you did nothing so when you call yourself 30, you're really 25. You got me? Some can argue, well, you didn't really do nothing until you hit 12. Well, then how old are you? You got me? We all hit adulthood at 18, but doesn't mean we actually really matured. Mature not necessarily being the physical, but the mental. If you haven't been through nothing, how can you be with somebody? And I tell people this all the time. If you have never experience something in your life how can you sit there and relate to anybody and the last thing I will leave you with this Disney has fed us a whole bunch of lies Cinderella Snow White Pocahontas we have to see what life is really about it's about struggle it's about love it's about endurance when you find a man you will want a man who has been through some of this stuff and he will have good qualities and another thing being is can you be with a man or do you just want to complain about being a lonely